let the attack of the awesome begin. Excellent! Good day to you all. This is Attack of the Awesome Interviews. I'm your host, Mike, and along with me is my fellow co-host, Susie. Yo, folks. And again, on this special interview, we have a special guest co-host again, who is known as the Hardcore Kid. Who are you calling special? <laughs> We're all special. What are you talking about, sucker? <laughs> so Don't make me come over there and beat you. Oh, <laughs> I want to see it. Get on. Bring it on, sucker. All right, anyways. <clears throat> our fourth guest, if I'm counting correctly, is a female reviewer of some sort. She reviews Z-grade films probably 1995 till now or so. Uh, let's see. Uh, her name is loosely translated in Latin as the Dark She-Wolf. She is Obscurus Lupa. Hello. Hey. I'm a female hey, reviewer of some sort, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we got some wonderful questions to ask you on this wonderful interview of ours. <clears throat> and... The first submitted questions from the forums is from Setsa Transa, and he is actually asking questions about how to make it as a reviewer. He says, <clears throat> Lupa, I'm having trouble getting anyone to look at my threads before they are pushed into obscurity. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I think the hardcore kid has had an experience with this. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't make shows or music video. I don't make shows or my music videos particularly often, pr probably once a month and a half, but they're of high quality with a lot of effort put into them. For this reason, I can't bump my threads much with new episodes, nor I can bump thread through discussion for long, since I'm lucky to even get one person to comment every three videos I make. Is that even is that a, question? a question? Is that a question? <laughs> I think it's more What's statement. I think, uh, I think what they're saying is they're, they're trying to, to figure out how to get their stuff out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And really, um, I found that, that the most successful thing for me when I was on the forums is just to interact with and watch other people's videos. Um, it's not so much about updating your own thread. I mean, you, you should, obviously, you know, be updating your stuff. But, um, you, you know, really, like, um, if you watch other people's videos and you comment, um, you should be anyway, because, I mean, really, if you want people to watch your stuff, you should do the same thing for them. Um, and give them comments, give them criticism. And the more people see your name, the more people are curious as to what you've done. Um, like, add a link in, in your, um, the, uh, the, um, the thing underneath your, <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, spacing out on what you call it. But um, basically, like, add a link to your stuff so that whenever you post, it's, it's in, you know, it's underneath there. And um, basically... Signature. Saying. Signature. Yeah, signature. Yeah, sorry, spacing on the word. <laughs> but um, yeah, like add it to your signature. Um, just you know, maybe a short description of what it is. Um, and basically just interact with people because really name recognition does go a long way. Because I remember people told me that that a lot of the times they only checked out my stuff because they saw my name enough times. Because there's so much content there, it's hard to narrow down what you want to watch and. Um, that's a good way to go about it. And obviously having a good quality show is, is also something you would need. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And there's a, sec <laughs> uh, a second question that is, uh, should I bother posting my non-review videos uh, on the forums, or do you think people ignore anything that aren't reviews? Um, I think it depends on what it is. I generally stick to things that are reviews on there, but I think if it's something kind of related to uh, what you do, um, if it's just like random like YouTube poop kind of stuff, I don't know, I wouldn't recommend <laughs> it, but yeah, I think it just depends 
the one it is. If you think you've got something, then then go for it. You know. Awesome. In your Transmission Awesome interview, you mentioned that MakingYouStupid.com helped you get your name out there. But when I joined their forum and made several posts, I soon realized they were dead and no one had made a post in months. How did they help you? Why are there no more? Um, the Making You Stupid people, um, the forums were always kind of dead. <laughs> the forums never really took off. But, um, you know, there was stuff going on on the site. Um, they were kind of proactive on the forums at, uh, at uh, that guy with the glasses. And uh, apparently they were talking to Rob and Doug at some point. I mean, they were talking to them. I don't know about what, but, um, you know, they, they would mention people um, on the site that they thought were, were good candidates to be picked up. Um, and part of that is, is that, um, that's part of the reason that I got picked up, you know, that I got recommendations. Um, they just they had to take a break for a while. The people who ran the site, um, it, um, his uh, wife was pregnant, so they kind of took some time off for that. And then um, after that, they just um, it never really picked up again. They did send uh, an email out saying that they were going to start posting content, but just I didn't hear anything after that, and they just kind of fell off of the internet. So I, I really don't know what they're doing now, but. Um, they did help me, um, you know, with giving recommendations and kind of uh, putting me out there and having another site to kind of show people. Um, I just, I don't know what they're doing now. Oh. Kind of a, a weird thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weird. yeah. All right, so who other than Doug Walker most inspired you to start a review series? Who other than Doug Walker? Um, it, I don't think it really was just Doug. It was sort of the community as a whole that really um, made me want to do these videos. Because um, I wasn't trying to emulate anyone in particular. Um, I just I thought it was a really cool thing to do um, because it just seemed like um, really fun people to work with. Um, so it's just sort of everyone all together. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he wrote a like a message saying, "Thanks, Lupa. I remember you being a form regular before you got picked up by that guy with the glasses. And I always thought, in the back of my mind, surely she's gonna get picked up at this rate. And sure enough, you were. Thanks, Lupa. I think this gave me and many other reviewers or makers of other content inspiration to keep going hard on the forms. Yeah, people definitely shouldn't um, give up." Yeah. I mean, especially, you know, it, it, sometimes it's hard to keep your content, um, people responding to it, um, and to keep going when you think that no one's really noticing. But um, if it's something that you really enjoy doing, um, oftentimes when you start giving up and stop trying to, be, to make it onto the site, that's when people start noticing, when you just start enjoying it for, for what you're doing. So... Um, I'm, I'm glad that it's inspired people because, I mean, there's a lot of great stuff on the forums that's worth watching, some stuff that's better than what you can even see on the main site. Mm. Mm. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got our uh, next set of questions by another uh, forum regular, uh, who's the Movie Brats. Uh, they're very, this guy's very good oh, at uh, creating a lot of good questions for us, so we've got a list by Movie Brat for you now. Okay. And his first question is, uh, this is kind of a running gag he's done with all of the other uh, Channel Awesome guys we've interviewed, and uh, what's your worst nightmare that Freddy Krueger can exploit to kill you? Uh, I would have a marathon of watching Jerry... And all the Terror Tunes movies. And then I would shoot myself. <laughs> I think that would be the ultimate nightmare. <laughs> Actually saw a uh, tape of Terror Tunes at FYE a while back, and I thought, hey, this looks like something good to review. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Uh, okay, I watched this the other day, and I wanted to say it was worse than Jerry. It is the fucking worst thing. I've like I, I watched it. Um, I can thank Necro Critic for this. 
He's like, oh, oh okay. go ahead and watch Terror Tunes. I'm like, all right, I'll watch Terror Tunes. I watched it for free, and I feel like I was owed money for watching that. <laughs> <laughs> and when I heard there were sequels, it was like a scanner's moment. Just my head exploded. That is just dreadful. Mm. <laughs> awesome. Okay, um, now it's... Okay. What is your opinion on the Saw movies? Um, I haven't seen them. So I really... Oh. Um, it's not like... I, I like horror movies, but I'm really more into, like, horror comedy type stuff. Um, the recent, you know, kind of torture porn stuff I don't really get into. I know Saw is supposedly more psychological, but it's just it's just not my thing. So I, I haven't really seen any of them. Okay. I saw, I saw, I saw part two and that was it. I, just I like uh, Cary Elwes. Like, I always say his name wrong. I like him, but I just don't want to watch Saw. <laughs> no, I've, I've just seen clips of it on YouTube and thought, right, that's enough for me to see. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what do we got here? Oh, have you seen uh, Masters of Horror? Um, the only Masters of Horror I've seen is um, Dance of the Dead, and that was because I was doing um, a collaboration review with uh, Apollo Z Hack. Because <laughs> okay, he signed up for they they were doing the the forum collaborations like a Land Before Time thing, and they did it with season one of Masters of Horror. And um, so um, Apollo signed up for it, mostly because of me, because like, he was like, I, I don't know if I should do it. And I'm like, oh, Dance of the Dead, that was a really good one, because I was thinking it was this other movie um, that was Dance of the Dead. And so he signed up for it, and he watched it, and I realized that I kind of signed him up for this kind of not very good movie so, well, episode, um, and so I, I I agreed to do a collaboration with him. We kind of I watched it and I'm like this really fucking sucks. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So that, that's all I've seen. Um, the show looks okay. Um, I don't like a whole lot of um, anthology shows where it's just a, a new story every week. Like I I kind of like things with continuity. Um, but um, from what I saw, it was it was okay. It was uh you know. All right. Hmm. Nice. Okay. Any obscure eighty slasher films you enjoy? Obscure eighty slasher films. Um, hey, you're obscurus. <laughs> doesn't mean I review obscure eighty slasher films. <laughs> um, I like the Maniac Cop. Just the first one, though. I watched the second one. It wasn't that great. I think it's because Campbell and it made me mad. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I'm trying to think offhand because I don't know how many obscure ones that I've I've watched. Um, <laughs> makes me a bad horror fan, I guess. <laughs> I like Halloween four and five. The fir first one's good, but I like four and five because they're they are craptastic. Um, <laughs> they could easily be like one movie, you know, because it had um, that uh, girl playing like almost pretty much both roles. Yeah, yeah. A Halloween 4 and 5 are basically one long movie. But, yeah. But I do like them. Um, and I think everyone hates them. Maybe that's why I like them. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought they were okay, but they could they could have... They could have been better. They easily could have been better. Yeah. Yeah. They, they could have been better, but um, given my taste in movies, that's probably why I like them. <laughs> it's because they're not <laughs> that great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't I don't think Evil Dead counts as a obscure or a slasher or anything like that, but anytime people ask for horror recommendations, that's always what I say, because the Evil Dead series is uh, is great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How would you feel if they made an Evil Dead 4? Um, I don't think Bruce Campbell wants to make an Evil Dead 4, honestly. Yeah. Like, I've watched... Um, um, interviews with him where people ask that, like uh, Q&A type stuff, and, and he's, he basically makes comments that amount to, do you really want to see Ash when he's old fighting <laughs> fighting deadites? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I think I think if they did it, um, 
they'd have to do it a certain way, but they could pull it off. Um, I'm not going to hold my breath for it. I'm not one of those people that's just like, I, I got to see Evil Dead 4. But if they did it, I wouldn't mind. I'd go see it. Um, I really want to see Evil Dead the musical get made into a movie. That's what I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is great. What? That's possibly Join the only Ash. time that they could re- recast Ash and it would work. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And uh, the next question by Movie Brat. Uh, do you watch Mystery Science Theater 3000? Do I watch it? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I love Mystery Science Theater 3000. Uh, what's your favorite episodes? Um, Space Mutiny and Time Chasers. <laughs> oh, Those ones are uh, fantastic. <laughs> Classic. Of course, Space Mutiny's got uh, the the awesome Red Brown in it. It's, uh, <laughs> what didn't you Big McLarge huge. Exactly. Big McLarge huge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Steak beef chop. Oh, <laughs> Do you watch the the uh, Mr. Science Theater shorts? Do you have any favorites of those? Um, I don't like the shorts as much. Um, I'm trying to think of what was a short that I did like. Um. I, don't know. I can't even remember a lot of them that I've watched. I usually kind of skip through them to get to the main feature. <laughs> I think uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it was one where this guy he goes up to this trial in in heaven and then he sort of learns driving skills or something. I don't know. It was some really dumb thing. <laughs> I think I remember that one. That another one you mean? I just can't remember the name of it. That was that was a really good one. Yeah, it's, it's been a while, so I guess, I guess it didn't strike me that much. I don't remember the name. <laughs> <laughs> the only one I can think of is the Hired one from the Manos episode. Yeah, Hired. I watched hired. that one because I, I have the Manos um, uh, DVD. That one is also a really good one. Um, Final Sacrifice is a good one, too. <laughs> well, the yeah, best round hour. Rift tracks. Rift tracks. Yeah, um, I've listened have, to like, some of the on samples on that they have. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've watched the the YouTube clips and the samples. Um, there's ones that I want to check out, like the Twilight one sounded hilarious. Oh, yeah, the room one. The best. Um, I think I think a lot of them that go over kind of the main movies, it, it doesn't appeal to me as much because um, the reason I liked Mystery Science Theater is really because that's the kind of movie I review. Is just cheap, funny movies. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, there's some of them that I want to check out. I've only seen uh, the little clips, though. All right. Groovy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We all know that that you are a fan of Big Wolf on campus. What are your favorite episodes? (laughs) Ooh, favorite episodes. Um, The Moncherian Werewolf two-parter which was, um, I think it's the only two-parter they had. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, they, they have the Evil Werewolf Syndicate that's called the Evil Werewolf Syndicate. <laughs> and, that's uh, the one where Laura gets I, I turned into a because, werewolf, yes? Yes, yes, where she gets turned into a werewolf. Because I thought it was badass. That was badass to me yeah. when I was, like, 11, you know? <laughs> Um, I liked it because it was more serious than the usual episode, because, like, um, even for a kid's show, like, I, I, I did like that when they didn't talk down to the audience, um, that's, that's the problem I had with a lot of kid's shows, was, you know, I mean, there's stuff like Brace Face and, you know, whatever, that's the one I always remember, because it was, I, that was just so stupid to me. Uh, now, do you have any thoughts on the new American Godzilla remake so far with Garth Edwards directing, uh, the guy that direct of uh, Monsters fame? Um, I think it could turn out good. Um, that's probably more a- Apollo's territory, um, the monster movie type things. So he loves yeah. Godzilla. Um, and he seemed to think it would it would go okay. Um, I think it'll, it'll turn out better than the, the last American remake they had. Mm-hmm. Um, which I, I liked when it came out because I used to have a crush on Matthew Broderick, so <laughs> that's why I liked it. But I watched it again like a year ago, and it was so boring, so boring. Like it only I like the end where it's like it turns into the Lost World ripoff, 
But then I could just watch The Lost World and save the time. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I think it'll, it'll turn out okay. I don't know the director that well, though. No. Speaking of Godzilla, what are your favorite Godzilla movies and why? <laughs> okay, I sort of, I sort of have a story here. Okay, I have, uh, I've only seen two Godzilla movies. One of which is the Godzilla remake, and the other which is Godzilla's Revenge. Um, <laughs> again, this is Apollo's fault here. He loves the Godzilla movies, and one of his favorites is Godzilla's Revenge, which is apparently hated by the Godzilla community. But he loves it because he watched it as a kid. So we sat down and watched it together. And it it wasn't a good movie. It's cheesy. It's basically the equivalent of a clip show in the Godzilla series. Like, they basically just show clips from other Godzilla movies, and they throw in this thing with um, this little kid. It's basically, the plot is this little kid is dreaming about being on the island of monsters um, and seeing Godzilla fighting all these monsters, and then it goes to the clip show. So really, none of it actually happens. All of it's a dream sequence, except for some parts where, like, the kid's fighting some robbers or something. So, really, Godzilla's not in it. <laughs> and he hangs out with Godzilla's son, um, Minya. And they got the fucking worst voice actor to do him in the, the American remake. He sounds like Don Knotts. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Oh my, oh my God, little son! And he looks like a big walking turd. But <laughs> 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 I'm gonna fight the monsters, and I'm like, oh fuck, we gotta watch a whole movie with this guy, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I, I can't really pick out a favorite one because I don't think either of them were very good. I, I think I like Godzilla's Revenge more, but um, you know, it's, I definitely would have. I wouldn't have watched it um, without Apollo there. <laughs> it was fun to watch it with him, though. Yeah. Godzilla! Go, <laughs> go, Godzilla! <laughs> Show me a clip. Um, Godzilla Final Wars, I think? Where, um, like, all these different Godzillas are coming together. Godzilla kills the American guy. <laughs> yeah. From the remake, <laughs> he shows up <laughs> for like two seconds and they kills him. <laughs> yeah. I think they, <laughs> that was funny. They, 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 they don't even call it guys, they call it like Zilla. Yeah, Zilla is, is what he's called, and everyone hates him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, uh, moving on. Oh, my questions are next. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> what's your favorite song that you listen to all the time? I love Road to Nowhere by Talking Heads. Talking my favorite heads, song. Yay. Yay. Um if you guys if you guys don't know the song, if you watch the Nostalgia Critics review of Little Monsters, which was my favorite movie as a kid, um <laughs> he uses the song in the review because that's the song in the credits, Road to Nowhere. Um I love that song. <laughs> Whenever I hear it, I like especially when I'm driving, I'm like, Yeah <laughs> I sing along to it, rock out. <laughs> That that song, funnily enough, always reminds me of uh, there's a level in the first Crash Bandicoot game that's called Road to Nowhere, and that song always goes in my head when I'm playing that level. <laughs> Strangely enough, <laughs> it always I jumps in my head. I love that they use the accordion in that song. You don't yeah. hear enough accordion <laughs> songs, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, which videos or reviews of yours are you the most proud of? Uh, Razor Sharp, I think, is my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of fun with that one. I don't know if it was the best on a, on a technical level, but just everything came together with that movie. Like, there's a lot of notoriously bad movies, um, like The Room and Shark Attack 3 that people have seen clips of and people know about. I feel like Razor Sharp was just as funny, if not funnier than those, but no one knew about it. And so I feel like I shared something with the world. <laughs> when I was doing Sharp. And really, the, the guy who, who made Razor Sharp was pissed. He sent me a, a, a message on YouTube 
Because <laughs> he was uh, mad about the review. Oh, boy. <laughs> but, uh, Another one. But really, like, I mean, that was a hilarious movie. I enjoyed watching it. <laughs> awesome. And I told him that, too. I'm like, I, I, I had fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> what is the worst movie you reviewed so far? Um, it's either 13 Seconds or Zombie Nation. Um that will probably change once Terror Tunes comes around. <laughs> oh boy. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. But yeah. 15 seconds of zombie nation. <laughs> what movie trailers that you saw recently that made you think, I have to see this? Um, I think trailers deceptive they always make me think this is going to be great and it never turns out that way <laughs> um I, I don't know honestly um i think the two are like not coming out very soon um i haven't seen a lot of trailers recently because i don't watch a lot of tv i mean it seems like i watch a lot more tv than i do um and, like, I, the last thing I went to see at the movies was Dinner for Schmucks, I think. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I kind of want to see Season of, or Season of the Witch or whatever, the Nicolas Cage one. Mm-hmm. I don't think it looks that great. I think it just sounds like a B-movie that was made. <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know. I'm, Poor Nicolas Cage. I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to the... <laughs> I'm looking forward to the Fright Night remake, um, just because it's got David Tennant in it. Yeah. I like Friday night, but I'll I'll check it out. <laughs> we love David Tennant. Um, trailer. Yeah, David Tennant's awesome. And now we've got a couple of questions by the forum reviewer Isaac two three two. And the first oh, I did a did a cameo for him. <laughs> Which kind of movies in your line of films would you find scarier for what they are? Scary films for what they are. Uh, um, see, like, here's the thing about the movies that I watch, like, um, I love horror movies, like horror comedies, but I don't like getting scared by movies, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm such a chicken, but, um, movies that scared me, uh, the original Night of the Living Dead is really good, um, but I can't watch it, because it scares me, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a really good zombie movie, and, um, it, you know, plays it realistically, and it's such a downer, and I, I think... I think I don't like downer movies, even though I like the horror movies. I, I, it's just a select group of movies that are just not really downers. Yeah. Um, uh, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that was scary. Um, and the original Nightmare on Elm Street was scary, too. People kind of forget that, you know, it really wasn't a comedy in the beginning. Um, that had some scary moments. Um, the, the Grudge remake scared me. It wasn't a good movie at all, but it still scared me. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what other scary movies. Um, Poltergeist was creepy. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. That I've seen about half of that, but I just <laughs> had to turn it off. The, no, 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 I'd like to keep my sanity. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the original Exorcist, that was a good one, too. Oh, I've, I've, I never planned to see that movie in my life. I've seen enough clips of it to last me a lifetime. I'm the same as you. I've never watched. I've never want to watch that film. <laughs> never. Oh, the um, the the original Omen. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but um, I remember one of the creepiest parts in that movie was um the birthday party scene. Mm-hmm. If any of you guys have seen it like um, yeah you know it's all these little kids at a birthday party and then all of a sudden the maid is standing on the roof and she's like this is for you it's all for you and she jumps down and you're like ah oh that's that's really weird that's really weird that part but yeah that was creepy. yeah <laughs> so. all right Here's the second question by our good World of Warcraft dude. If Channel Awesome were to make you like the head of a human relationship department for the Be User Forum, since you like to help out with us whenever you can, would you take that role? Um, I don't think I would. I kind of don't like responsibility. <laughs> 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 um, 
See, that's I, I, bad. I, I had like to shovel snow people, today. I do like helping people, but I don't like being in charge of something. Um, I'd rather, uh, I'm kind of, I like other people taking charge of things. Um, and I think I just, I wouldn't do a good job with it if there's people that could do it better than me. So. <laughs> uh, these next questions are by our fellow host that couldn't make it tonight, Chris. Uh, his first Ooh. question. His first question is, uh, oh, you were the few who have seen Todd in the Shadows via a webcam, so would you care to tell us what he looks like? Well, of course, he's a, an Asian African American woman, right? <laughs> as far as you know. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> um, I, I, I can't, I, I don't want to go into specifics, but he is a handsome man. And then oh. when you saw him at MAGFest at 3, so... <laughs> oh, right then. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, and he's such a cool guy. Like, he's so cool. Um, and hang out with him, and just, like, he's, he's uh, just really chill, and he's really funny. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He's awesome. a really cool guy. Awesome. Um, now, what are your opinions on the Asylum brand of films? Um, they sound a lot funnier than they usually turn out to be. Um, I think a lot of the times, you know, they'll they'll take the title, um, make it similar, but they don't really do a, a kind of rip-off thing. Um, but um, I've only seen one, one Asylum film, and that was the Sherlock Holmes thing that they did. Um, and they did that they did that cheesy on purpose, so it really wasn't like something you could laugh at. It's something you kind of laugh with. Mm -hmm. um, but it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. <laughs> you got Sherlock Holmes and dinosaurs. And the guy from Torch. It's great. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> and okay, so these are my questions now. Yes. Okay. Is everybody still with me? Yes. Yeah. Alrighty. Now, Lupa. What separates you from other reviewers? How do you describe the Obscurus Lupa character in general? I think um, I'm more sarcastic, but I think also I kind of think Obscurus Lupa is kind of more positive than the other reviewers. Like, I mean, like they're they're not very good films, but I tend to to view them as something enjoyable for what they are, and I think. Um, that's I mean, something so that, that kind of awesome. separates me. Cause I, yeah, yeah, because um, like, I'll make fun of them, and some of them aren't very good and I don't enjoy, but for the most part, I think, um, you know, I, I like having a character who just, well, I mean, it's basically me, you know, who just enjoys something that you wouldn't typically enjoy. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> uh, are there any plans for any more spin-off shows for your channel? Um, not really at the moment. I mean, I have trailer dubs and, and manic episodes. Um, you know, and having three shows isn't too bad. I, I don't have any plans. I mean, if there's something in the future, why not? But like Lupa, that's April. really what I got right now. <laughs> what? Lupa B bomb or something. <laughs> Lupa B bomb, yeah, because there's not any bomb characters already. I really love the, the. You know what I really liked was um, Diamanda Hagen, her take on the bomb. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> uh, cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, now, what is your favorite kind of music, and uh, do you have any favorite bands? Yeah. But uh, I listen to all sorts of music. Um, I don't. I don't think I have any particularly favorite bands. I do like the City Drive, but that's really because it's got one of the people from Big Wolf on campus in it, <laughs> and they're not together anymore. Um, but um, I like a lot of alternative music and oddly specific songs, mm -hmm. like um, anything that you hear in my reviews in the intros that are just oddly specific. That's Almost always something that's on my iPod that I have. 
Um, there's there's very few songs that I that I downloaded for specifically for a review. Most of the time, it's just I'm like, all right, what would go good with this? All right, I have this song. There we go. <laughs> Who are some of your favorite reviewers, both on the DGWTG roster and on the forums? Um, I do like the Apology Hack. Um, I like Cinema Snob, uh, Film Brain, Mike J. Of course, um, Nostalgia Critic, Linkara, yeah. Spoonie. Um, on the forums, I really love Bargain Bin Horror. I re- really hope that they start doing videos again. Um, Bargain, they're really great. Um, the Amanda Hagen. Um, yeah. Trying to think if I'm, I hope I'm not forgetting anyone, but. You forgot me! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, groovy. <laughs> uh, are you going to take part in a third That Guy with the Glasses anniversary? I really hope I do, um, but I don't know. <laughs> oh. They haven't talked to anyone about what they're going to do or who's coming. I mean, I think the obvious people are coming, but I mean, um, yeah. I, mean I don't know. No, I hope I get invited. It'd be really fun. But um, we'll just have to see, I suppose. <laughs> People were asking about that at MAGFest, too. You know, like, like what, what's it going to be about? And it's like, we don't know. None of us know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it really Doug and Rob are the only people who know. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to see it. It's going to be cool. Now, our next set of questions are um, by Detroit Networks. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, his first one, we start off, um, I did basic in the southwest, we starts off with, are you in the blistering hot part or the freezing cold part? Of Arizona? Yeah. I think so, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what he's referring to, are you in the blistering hot part of Arizona or the freezing cold part of Arizona? <laughs> I, think, I think I'm kind of in between. Um, I'm in Prescott Valley, so it's kind of like um, we get hot in the summer and snow in the winter, so it's sort of a, a nice balance. I'm I'm not, not too far from Phoenix, which is the blistering hot part, so I'm kind of close to that. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm big oak. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you, do you feel that you get an unfairly positive reaction from some people because of your gender? If not, do you, do you feel that you get an unfairly negative reaction from some people because of your gender? <laughs> um, if people are going to watch my videos just because I'm a chick, hey, more ad revenue for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just don't remember. I remember when I first got onto the site when the room review went up, um, somebody posted, like, I should just get he has boobs <laughs> but um other than that i don't think i don't think there's too much say one way or the other I, I don't think there's a lot of negative reactions i think it's harder as a female reviewer um to sort of um do the funny video thing i mean a lot of, you know you've heard it before like oh girls can't be funny um and i think it, it is kind of harder to be one of the guys you know kind of prove yourself, you know? Yeah. Um, it, hopefully, you know, hopefully people find my stuff funny. I think people do, but, um, you know, I don't think there's a whole lot of negative reaction. Um, I think a lot of it, you know, some people might watch because they're like, oh, it's a chick, she's hot, but, I mean, hey, I don't mind ad revenue. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm rolling in the money here. <laughs> uh, if you could have any celebrity, internet or mainstream, on your show, who would it be and why? Oh, oh gosh, it's a, it's a toss-up here. It'd either be Cynthia Rothrock or Kate Hodge. All right. I think Cynthia Rothrock would probably be probably be the one I go with because uh, since I've reviewed so many of her movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think I think the why is obvious there, but I, I think she has a, she'd have a humor about it. Um, and it'd just be nice to talk to her and kind of find out, you know, 
some of the stories behind these movies that um, that I've watched because um, I find looking behind the scenes of some of these um, low grade B movie TV shows whatever I find looking behind the scenes of them kind of helps you appreciate them more. And I, I think that's sort of part of why I, I review B movies in sort of a positive light. It's because um, I kind of like showing people what I see. Because I don't just see, you know, razor sharp, like, oh, look, this is shot on shitty, oh, really poorly done. Um, I like to kind of show people why I enjoy them and sort of the good aspects of these things. Um, and it'd be interesting to talk to her about, you know, China O'Brien or Angel of Fury and, um, you know, see kind of the behind the scenes stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh. And of course, we finish it off with one of Detroit's most random questions. <laughs> Fred and okay. Jack Thompson are about to fight to the death. Go have a pizza or a beer. Well, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what was your question? Yeah. <laughs> Take it from the top. Fred, Do it again. Fred fell. Fred. Phelps and Jack Thompson are about to fight to the death. Do you go have a pizza or a beer? I don't even understand the question. <laughs> I know what you said, but I don't even understand. I don't get it. Okay. Maybe if you're maybe if you're going to go watch these two people beat the crap out of each other, do you go while you're doing it? Do you get a pizza or a beer? I have no idea. <laughs> pizza, because beer. Tastes like moldy old bread. Beer's nasty. <laughs> right on. Let's sober up. Choice pizza. Please drink responsibly. Which I'll probably get today, because that sounds delicious. Pizza. <laughs> but not pizza beer. beer. No, I was just oh, going to yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> That's going no, um, the... Next set of questions, um, Looper, are by myself. There's quite a few of them to go, so I'll start off okay. with the list for me. Now, uh, <clears throat> who were you the most excited to meet at MAGFest? Oh, gosh, who was I most excited to meet at MAGFest? I, w I was excited to meet everyone, um, but I was really excited to meet Spoonie. I know it. We live like a couple hours apart, but it took going to Virginia to meet him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I didn't get to talk to him that much because um, I got kind of shy. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was fun talking to him. Uh, he was a nice guy. He um, waiting in line to get an autograph. At, then uh, I was walking uh, with Apollo, and then we see. Um, Spoonie over there, and then he waves at me, and I'm not sure if he's waving at me or someone around me, so I look around, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> but everyone was so cool there, um, I had to meet Lewis, and Todd, and Skitch, and uh, Phelous, and just everyone, um, it, that was really cool, I had a lot of fun at that fest. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Absolutely. And, and if anyone um, has not met um, Owen Citizen on the forums, um, he, I forgot to mention him. He's really good on the forums. Um, but if anyone hasn't met him or um, Joey from Clan of the, Clan of the Gray Wolf or um, Righteous Brian, those are three of the nicest guys. Um, we got to hang out with them and have uh, breakfast with them, and they are so, so nice. Like, if you guys ever get a chance to meet them or talk with them, they're really cool. Sweet. Cool. Is there a set pattern to the movies you review, or is it just a random selection process? Just Basically, random. like, I, I kind of, um, I don't select them so far ahead of time. Like, it's usually, like, a couple movies. I'm like, I know the next two things I'm going to review, and then after that, I don't know. I just sort of select it by what I want to review. And I think it's kind of better that way, because sometimes I'm in the mood to review something, and sometimes I just kind of want to hold it off for later. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually just movies that I've watched recently that I thought were really cheesy. There's some of them that I have on the back burner. Like, I have a lot more Cynthia Rothrock movies that I've, I've watched that I want to review, but I'm kind of spacing them out. So, um, 
good to know. Okay. It really it, it is kind of a random selection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> plus, I'm doing like sci-fi original movie double feature. That was obviously you know. Yeah. I had to pick <laughs> sci-fi. Mm-hmm. But. <laughs> Ah, uh, Bruce Campbell for the win. <laughs> <laughs> he he is awesome, and no matter what he does, it's just his movies are not always awesome. Um, there's one I want to review that he was in called Mind Warp, that uh, also has Angus Scrim, who is the tall man in Phantasm. So we kind of like bringing two good things together into a not so great movie. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, now, we kind of touched on this a little earlier on, but um, I'll just ask you, as a general question, what is your advice for all of the forum reviewers hoping to get picked up by Channel Awesome? Um, my advice is to keep going and interact with other people, because um, really, like, uh, the community is, they're the people watching your video, uh, it's you know, watching other people's videos, other people's videos, really is is helpful too. Because um, people do recognize your name, and you find people that you wouldn't check out otherwise, um, that maybe not everyone knows about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's frustrating when uh, you're working on it for a long time, and you think that no one's noticing. People do notice. Um, and really, if you're doing videos, it shouldn't just be to be picked up. It should be because it's something that you enjoy. And I, that was something I sort of had an, uh, as a mindset when I started because um, um, I didn't even know if I could make a video, much less something that was worth that guy with the glasses time, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, that's, that was sort of a mindset that I had. I said, all right, if I don't get picked up, is this something that I want to keep doing? And it is because I, I enjoy making something that will last tangible to show people to say like all right this is what i'm doing with my time you, you can enjoy it or you can't but yeah that's what i have you know so um yeah that's sort of my advice for people if you were in kick like if you were to go if you were to go out to reno with the other contributors what would you want your role to be like um I was a Cassia. Didn't you guys see my plug? I seamlessly inserted myself in there. <laughs> I pulled a George Lucas on that. Um, I don't know. I think it'd be cool, like like team up with the snob, try to overtake it or something. <laughs> that would be cool. Be fun. Maybe pull some kick ass uh, Cynthia Rothrock moves, maybe whip out the towel. <laughs> <laughs> All right on. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been so fun to do. Um, I can picture a fan coupling with Loop by the Cinema Snob. Oh man, I read I read the uh, the fan fiction prompts that people have. What? Of requests for like Snob Loop stuff. <laughs> Not a lot of uh, actual filling it out though. I think it's because I've dressed up as the Snob twice now, so people are just like, let's get those two together. <laughs> <laughs> You idiot! I think most of the most pick <laughs> is uh, me and Todd. I think. Really. Or me and JC. For some reason, I, people like me and JC would talk together in fanfics. Apparently. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> that was the very, very first fanfic someone wrote about. Was um, a pairing pick mm. with me and and JC. <laughs> <laughs> but we were just. It's like it was like we were. It was. It wasn't even really a, a, a couple thing. That was the prompt. It was really just like we were like... <laughs> Which I think it's funny when people write yeah, high school. It's so hard to imagine me in high school anymore. It hasn't been that long, but it's just I feel like it's it's weird. <laughs> yeah. I know the feeling. <laughs> when, were you fir- when were you first introduced to that guy with the glasses dot com? Um, it was a little bit before the first year anniversary thing happened. Um, there was another forum that I went to. Someone mentioned um, the Nostalgia Chick um, and Big Lipped Alligator Moment. And I'm like, what the fuck's Big Lipped Al- Alligator Moment? <laughs> and so I looked it up <laughs> on YouTube. I found Nostalgia Chick stuff, and then I saw the link to that guy with the glasses, and I went there. And that's um, sort of how that happened. 
Um, I just started watching all the videos. Groovy. Awesome. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. Yay, murder. All right. Oh, okay. <clears throat> if you were asked to remake one of the crappy films you reviewed, which one would you choose, and what would you do to improve it? Ooh, what one would I remake? Um, I know I keep bringing it up, Razor Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> do a remake of it, but like a gritty reboot of it with the same guy. <laughs> but just do it like expendable style, you know? Just like yeah. give Troy and Ashford the fame he really wanted that never got and apparently he's still trying for, apparently. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. He released Razor Sharp under another name at one point too, which was really dumb, but it was it was like called the weapon or something. It was dumb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what we'd call the remake. The weapon. <laughs> Weapon. The razor, razor sharp, sharp weapon. weapon. That's what we call it. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. Uh, <laughs> now, Lupa, I review really crappy blockbuster movies that shouldn't have made money at the box office, but somehow did. What, in your opinion, is the worst <laughs> blockbuster movie you have ever seen? Where's Blockbuster one? Um, trying to think of like ones that made any money that I've watched. <laughs> there's a few. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of really crappy Hollywood movies. To, to be honest, there's not a lot in Hollywood that, that interests me, and that's kind of why I like the B-movies, is because a lot of the times they're better than what you find in the theater. Yeah. Um. I think I didn't like Alice in Wonderland, the remake, um, the Tim Burton mm. one. Yeah, I've, I've been. T- it that had was... great visuals. Uh huh. About it. Um, I think the biggest disappointment for me was Funny People. Mm-hmm. That, uh, yeah. The recent Adam Sandler one. Like I was, was so sad because it, 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 it's it's I saw it too. It's the problem with it is that it's just too long. Two and a half hours is too long. Oh, yeah, it could have ended so many times. And they end up exactly where they were in the beginning. No one learns a damn thing. It's the same, like, and and they try too hard to be a dramedy, but they kind of lose the point. Like, it's just kind of mean-spirited. Yeah. Like, I just, um, I just, I didn't get it. I was really looking forward to it. I saw the trailers, and I was, like, talking to people. I'm like, yeah, I really want to see that. I really want to see it. And it's another case of, you know, trailers will deceive you. You know, mm. and they tried to play it up as more of a comedy than it was, but it just, it didn't work either way. I think the same thing goes for The Last Airbender, because um, when you look at it, it looks, it looks really cool, and then when you, when you finally get to see it, like, jack shit happens in it. Yeah, I remember seeing the trailer for Last Airbender, thinking it looks pretty good, but I'm glad I dodged that bullet. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't seen it. I, Twilight's another example of a... A bad uh, blockbuster movie, but an enjoyable blockbuster movie. I, I like to think of it as like a big budget B movie flick. Mm-hmm. Like not everyone's in on the joke there. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, that's one of the. And sadly, the one of the questions coming up is, "What is your opinion on the Twilight Saga?" Twilight's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so I, li- I like watching. Okay, I haven't seen Eclipse yet, um, and it's because. Because it really pissed me off that Rochelle Lefebvre's not in the series anymore. But, um, and New Moon really wasn't that, that funny. But the first movie was, if you watch it as a comedy, it's hilarious. Like, I like watching it and riffing it with friends. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, it's it's like a big, big budget B-movie, um, you know, that I can enjoy for, for how bad it is. Um, I'll probably see... Breaking Dawn. I don't know if I'll watch the clips because I heard it wasn't that bad. Um, but Breaking Dawn, there's so much horrible, horrible things in that story that you can't get around. You can't make that better in a movie, no matter how much you try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my opinion. No, okay. So, uh, isn't, that one, isn't that the one where she gets pregnant? Uh, yes, yes. And they have sex on an island together. 
He knocks her up. <laughs> There's a lot of bad fan fiction stuff going on. <laughs> it's, I've read all the books. I've read the books. They're funny. They're, <laughs> just the way they're written. Just forget the fact that the story is terrible. Just the way they're written is um, like bad fan fiction. Like especially the fourth one. You read it, and I'm like, all right, I am not an author by any means. I I tried it a long time ago. It's not me. Um, and like, I I still could write better than that. I still could could do things better than Stephanie Meyer did. <laughs> Have you heard of Nutty Madam Thirty Five Seventy Five? Uh, no. Good. <laughs> She's like this crazy Twilight oh, oh. fan, and she she goes off on uh, people who who criticize Stephanie Meyer in the Twilight series. She she actually Wasn't went on she? this total rampage. <laughs> she went on this total rampage against Stephen King because. He said that uh, Stephanie Meyer can't write worth a darn. She can't. Like, okay, exactly. make fun of, like, Stephen King having, like, you know, certain tropes or whatever, you know, things that, that he does that's kind of cliched, but, like, he is a good author, and he does write yeah. some great stories. Not all of them are great, but, I mean, you know, he has some um, something to back him up, you know, and Stephanie Meyer has Twilight. She didn't write before that, did she? I'm pretty sure that was her first book. Mm. It shows. So. <laughs> like, I mean, and if you read, um, okay, like the first Twilight book, um, the, the movie kind of made it better. They added more things to that weren't in the book because really the book is just a romance novel, and he happens to be a vampire, and it's not a good romance novel either. It's creepy, and the whole thing is just Edward's eyes. Bella looked at him longingly. Edward's eyes. Bella looked at him longingly. And, uh, and then at the very end, some vampires show up and there's a fight. Just like, like as an afterthought, you know. <laughs> Interesting. Awkward silence once again. <laughs> All right, oh, let me, uh, let's see. Which of the Back Out the Glasses contributors would you love to collaborate with? And, and if so, what would you review? Yeah, but um, I may or may not have a collaboration already planned. Don't want to spoil it. Oh. But, um, <laughs> as for for people I'd like to collaborate, <laughs> I would uh, collaborate with Spoonie. That would be a lot of fun. Um, Winkara, Film Brain, um, Cinema Snob. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Be a lot of fun. Yeah, um, there's not really anyone on the site that I wouldn't want to collaborate with. Like, they're all a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Rolo OT extended an invitation. He said, you know, if you ever wanted to collaborate, <laughs> that'd be fun. Cool. How did you feel when you found out that Doug Walker was reviewing the room? <laughs> when I found out that, that uh, Doug was reviewing room as well. Um, I, I had already planned on doing mine. I think I was already done with mine when he put up um, and a little bit ahead of time. Um, no, I thought it was good news because then that means that people would watch mine. <laughs> <laughs> and besides, like, when people do the same review, I don't really mind when people review the same movie as long as they have something to say, as long as their review is funny. It doesn't matter if it's the same thing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, uh, and it did get me a cameo in there. No one knew who I was, but it, it's good publicity. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Do you think the movie slash TV franchise of vampires uh, has gone out of control, or should there be more of these? Um, I don't. Th I think I would watch a vampire show or vampire movie if it sounds good, but I do that. Twilight Generation is kind of, I don't have any interest in it. Like, I like the Twilight movies for comedies. But, um, like, like, Vampire Diaries, um, the Teen Wolf remake, things like that. Like, they're just um, kind of like take the worst parts of Twilight with the comedy elements. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, um, I don't know. I don't know if they should stop making vampire movies or vampire TV shows or anything like that, but they should stop trying to be Twilight. Yeah. Have you seen yeah. that 
Horrible, is this horrible just... Seltzerberg movie, uh, Vampire Suck? I haven't. <laughs> I wanted to because, again, the trailer deceived me. But um, I watched an entire scene from it. They put up a scene from the movie um, that you could watch. And I kind of realized, like, the only reason the jokes in the, the, the trailer were funny was because of how fast cut it was. Like, they actually they drag them out so much in the movie. Like, that, that, that scene where um, the, the guy is talking to the bad guys, and he's like, oh, you're the black-eyed peas. <laughs> this scene goes on for, like, two or three minutes, just of, like, <laughs> you're the black-eyed peas. No, we're not the black-eyed peas. The Black Eyed Peas didn't even have a white guy in it. Oh, why do they always think we're the Black Eyed Peas? And it just kind of goes on forever. And I'm like, well, it's funny if you just kept it like, oh, it's Black Eyed Peas. Do something else now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, so I when, did when, not you, watch it. when you when you fail to make a funny parody of Twilight, you ultimately fail at that parody. And they in did general. it. They did a Twilight parody in um, dance flick. I remember oh, at the yeah. at the end of it. Um, I caught the end of it. I didn't watch the movie, but um, they did a Twilight parody in there, too. Oh, yeah, that's but right. I know yeah. what Twilight parody can be done really well. It's just Seltzerberg is not the people to do it. <laughs> yeah. And again, uh, like, okay, like, the werewolf turns into a chihuahua joke, really? They didn't go that route? I have seen that. On- <laughs> <laughs> I chihuahua. <laughs> I've seen that YouTube videos. I'm not like, like people on YouTube did that, and they weren't paid to do it. Okay, they were a lot funnier at it too. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, now the next question we put is: um, Have you seen the TV show Hex, which is uh, kind of like the UK version of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Um, I remember seeing like a little bit of it when it was on, but no, I haven't. I've heard it's kind of cheese-tastic, though. <laughs> I've heard it wasn't that great, but <laughs> I could be wrong. It's, I've got the... There were two seasons of it that came out, which I've recently saw... When was it? It was August last year I was introduced to it, and I thought, personally speaking, I thought it was a little kind of better than Buffy. Um, but it is just kind of like the UK version of it, um, so it's... I would say it's worth checking out. I heard that there was, like, a lesbian ghost in it. Yeah, aha, uh-huh, there's uh, Jemima Roper. She plays a... She's a lesbian in the in the program, and then she gets killed, and then she's a ghost all the way through it. And it's just really, really funny, and it's sharp sharp humor, and it's, it's really, really good. I'll have to check it out. Um, it'd be... Even if, you know, it turns out that something that's not really my thing... Um, it could be worth talking about manic episodes. I, I like checking out some of the shows that I didn't catch around the run. Mm-hmm. Like I finished one recently that was a Tales of the Gold Monkey, which um, is not my favorite show, but I did appreciate it for what it was. And I'm, I'm going to do a, a manic episodes on that because I want to kind of tell other people about it. You know. Mhm. Oh, okay. Awesome. Uh, oh, it's another one of mine again. Um. Who would you say are your main inspirations in the world of comedy uh, slash film reviewing? For my main inspirations as far as film reviewing? or mm-hmm. And in the world of comedy as well. Um, probably, you know, Nostalgia Critic, um, Cinema Snob, um... Those guys are hilarious. Um, real life comedians, gosh, I don't know. I like <laughs> um, any uh, stand up comedians or any people you'd see in movies or television. I like Brian Reagan a lot. He's really hilarious. Um, well, gosh, what was the name of this guy that I knew? Um, Mitch Hedberg was hilarious. Oh yeah, he, he was he, hilarious. He's passed away now, but. He, he was really good. I loved listening to him. Um, uh, what's his face? J- uh, what's his face? Um, <laughs> Jim Gaffigan. He's really funny, too. Um, I enjoy Conan O'Brien, and I really respect Conan O'Brien, too. I yeah. like watching his show. And I, I, I like him as a person, you know? Um, I, I kind of respect people who can do kind of the 
they're funny, but they're not completely out there. Like, it kind of rides the line between being funny and, and being serious. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Bruce Campbell can do that with the right script. I don't know if he can do it just on his own, but, um, I mean, in the Evil Dead films, he did it perfectly, you know? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Which of the big horror movie franchises work for you? Like Evil Dead, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th. Evil Dead, and all the way. I, mean, I keep talking about it, and there's a reason. Evil Dead 2 is my favorite movie. Um, and uh, the Evil Dead franchise works for me because of the the line between comedy and horror that it plays. Um, because it does it so well. There's a lot of movies that are like, you know, they call themselves horror comedies that really, it goes too far in one direction, and it just, it kind of ruins it. Um you know, if they try too hard to be a comedy, it's not scary. If they try too hard to be scary, it's not funny. Um, I think that's another reason that I like She Wolf of London a lot, um, the, the, the TV show, because um, it didn't try to be too funny in the beginning, anyway. Before it became Love and Curses, you know, like it didn't try to be too funny. It didn't try to be too scary. It was just kind of what it was. Um, you know, and that's really what works for me. I don't like things that just are really, really dark all the time or things that are just, you know, jokey all the time. And uh, that's another reason I like Buffy, too, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. because of the, the horror comedy elements. Um, I haven't seen a whole really... lot of... I've, I've seen the original Nightmare on Elm Street and the, the, uh, the new Nightmare. I, I liked them. I haven't watched really the ones in between, though, which I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> You should you should watch the third movie, uh, Dream Warriors. That, that I have that movie. It's like my favorite in the series. Like it works because um, you, you have this whole you, you have this whole group of teenagers who team up with to fight Freddy, and they've all got like these crazy special powers. Like Patricia Arquette. Is oh wait. And she and she has. Wait, I, I saw I saw part of the third one on TV. I remember. I remember seeing part of that yeah. one because I remember the guy who who turned himself into a wizard <laughs> in the dream. Yeah. Harry Potter. And then he ends up, he's like, I'm winning. And then and he just giggles his ass. <laughs> he's like, I got this many hit points. So I'm winning. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Who do you think? Yeah, I, that, that seems like a cheesy series I could get into. I just haven't gotten around to it. Who do you think would it. win in a fight? Lord I think Lord a horror franchise that, that didn't work for me was <laughs> Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Or Baltimore. <laughs> no, but uh, a horror franchise that didn't work for me was really um, the Leatherface franchise. Oh. Like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Every sequel is a reboot of the franchise. Every mm. sequel. <laughs> have you see- Have you read the Harry Potter books? Yes. Uh, which- oh, I enjoyed them. Which of the Harry Potter movies did, did you feel that it was the closest to the book that it was based on? Closest to the book? Gosh, I don't know. I forget everything immediately after I finish the book. I'm like, who are these characters? What's going on here? <laughs> um, I think my favorite of the movies was the fourth one, Goblet of Fire. I just um, enjoyed the story more there. Um, and hey, we got Robert Pattinson! Ooh! But um, it, that's sad because I saw I saw the DVD and then they showed the bonus features and he, he really seemed like a nice guy. Like you you want to see him again? Uh, about five years later, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember I remember watching it thinking he was really cute. I remember watching it. I'm like, yeah, Cedric's cool. He's he, mm-hmm. he's a happening dude. And then I don't know. I watch Twilight. And I'm like, what? are they trying to make him look as scary and pedophile as possible? I don't understand. <laughs> uh, I, I, like, I don't think he's he's a bad person. I don't think any of the people involved with Twilight are like bad people. I just think they're in a bad movie. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, uh, basically, Lippe, I'm with you about the, the fourth film. I love that, but for me personally, I think that was the, the movie that was so far away from the book that I was kind of li- a little disappointed because there were, was like, um, Ludo Bagman was missing from it and they got rid of Dobby and uh, Winky, the house elves. They just got rid of them. And, and they w- Winky. 
Yeah, Winky. They, they never mentioned her in the movie, well, and it's just like she was kind of important. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, there is stuff that they removed. Um, there's stuff they removed from all the movies, but I kind of appreciate when they do that, um, just because the movies get so long, and some of the plots really, the subplots, like the, the house elf thing, like it, getting it, it cut from the movie, like it, it was important to the story, but it wasn't so important that they couldn't work without it, and these movies get so lengthy. Yeah. I always thought the second uh, movie ha- had more stuff uh, from the original because I actually watched like the uh, the television version which had all the, the uh, scenes that were deleted. It was like all mm-hmm. all complete, and, and you wonder why were these scenes cut out from the uh, original release? That they they, they follow they follow the book like almost to a whole. That's yeah. Why like, uh-huh. That's why I like I like to get to the Chamber of Secrets. It's my favorite movie because it's closer to the book than the other ones. That's a really good one. I think. Uh, the the earlier ones are fun. Um, some of the acting's kind of shaky, but I guess that comes with the territory. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of well, interesting to see they're, they're, the okay. actors grow up on screen, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think at the moment I'd have to say The Deathly Hallows is shaping up to be my favorite one just because it was, it, it's followed it so closely and they, and they can't leave anything out. That it's... it's it's really fun. It's it's dark, but it's really fun to to watch. And you think, oh my god, they've included that. It's so cool. I'm glad that they made it into two movies so they can get get everything out. But um, when it comes out on DVD, like both movies, they should be like in one set. Yeah. Like, so so that you don't have to um, sort of like the Titanic in a way. Uh huh. So you don't but, have like, to it's, miss it's out anything. A double, yeah. uh, it's like a double feature. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That should be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that should be. Uh, any other comments besides Harry Potter, Talupa? We love you. Um, 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm out of questions. Help. Uh, any, no. You've never watched any of my stuff at all, have you, Brandon? Um, who are you interviewing? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't study. You didn't research. Didn't do the research. I want. I want your stuff. I want your stuff. <laughs> She's the one with who wears the hat, right? <laughs> I want Snickerloopy. I know who you are. Snickerloopy. <laughs> well, that is it for. For this Attack at the Awesome interview with the one and only Oscurus Lupa. Hey. Uh, Yay. Is... Hooray. 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 Hooray, hurrah. This is the greatest interview. Change, you got change. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has been your lovely host, Mike. Along with me were Susie. Yay. And the hardcore kid, also known as Brandon. Peace. Uh, stay tuned for the next interview where we interview Benzai. Yay! Adios. Yay! 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 Yay!